Defects at Melbourne's tallest building. Let's have a look. Hello everyone. I hope you're having a good weekend. Florian Heiser here for another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at an article discussing defects in Melbourne's tallest building. I bought it here. And for those of you that were watching my live stream last night, you'll notice the upgrade to my microphone. Let me know in the comments if it's an improvement. We'll see how it goes. So, fears of defects in Melbourne's tallest building. Now, defects happen in all buildings. Just part of the process. You need to make an allowance for it. That's why you have a retention, why you have a defects liability period. You plan for these things. They happen. Good builders will pick them up before you have to go out and do an inspection, but things will always slip through. Now, let's have a look. What do you reckon we're going to find here in the defects? I haven't read the article yet. You know, a cloud is forming over what is set to become Australia's second tallest building, with claims of loud cracking sounds and windows that no longer open. Oh, that's, that's terrible. I mean, that is really terrible. Because, I mean, Q1 down on the Gold Coast, one of the biggest towers in Australia, Rachel was interviewed by Radio National or ABC Radio with regards to the fire safety in the building. They had some real drastic defects in that building with regards to just the final design outcome and what the certified it through. Loud cracking and windows that don't open, that doesn't fill me with any confidence. The 319 metre Australia 108 building in Melbourne's South Bank will boast more than 100 apartments over, one, oh, sorry, 1,000 apartments over 100 floors. But the Victorian Building Authority confirmed to the New Daily it had visited the site on Thursday and requested to see building plans. So let's just jump here into Google Earth and we'll have a look. Here's the site of the building and we'll zoom out. You see, you've got South Wharf, Docklands, Melbourne there, you know, Yarraville, and you can, we can go out. So, you know, right in the heart of Melbourne, so a good part of the city, but a thousand apartments. There's always going to be multiple people they're trying to sell. You'll always be competing with people to sell your apartment. A thousand. It's crazy. Crazy. Industry leaders have told of reports the building still under construction, has cracks in its plaster, and has experienced movement. Okay, well, you know, plaster cracks isn't that big a deal, to be honest. That, that gets dealt with, and there will always be some settling in the building. Maybe they just built stuff out of order. You know, de defects are not the end of the world. I'd be interested to hear if there were conflicts happening on site or something like that that we were worried about. But I think everyone's always on, is on high alert at the moment. Everyone is being extra vigilant about what's happening in our construction industry, understandably, because we're hearing about ongoing, you know, fundamental, serious defects to buildings where they're literally being abandoned uh, years after they've been constructed. The VBA did not disclose the specific reasons for its probe, but said that it, its investigation was ongoing. Multiplex confirmed the VBA's visit to the New Daily and conceded the building was suffering from some minor defects, but it denied that the VBA had requested to see plans and said the inspection was conducted at random. Often, I know in Queensland, they'll do those inspections to try and find unlicensed workers, unlicensed tradies, people that are, you need to have a license to do most trades, even just for fire separation. That, that's a, there's a technical requirement you need to be competent in doing it because you don't want dodgy people building these things. There are no structural is issues with Australia 108. The building is still under construction and some slight movement is to be anticipated in certain circumstances, a multiplex spokesperson said. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, these things aren't pristine as you build them. There's absolutely no risk to current residents. Some minor defects may occur from time to time after the handover of apartments. Well, yeah, that's why you have you know, under your, depending on the type of construction contract you have, you have a defects liability period that you say in your contract, you know, six months, one year, a couple of years. During that period, the builder, the contractor should come back and rectify the defects. Now, if they chuck a hissy fit and refuse to do it, you can take some of the retention that you had. So every time you pay the money, uh, pay money to the builder, you hold on to a little bit, or you have two bank guarantees. You can take a portion of that and use that to rectify the defect by paying another party. So you're not left in the wilderness. And that's, that's during just the, the breaking in of a building. 
a building is in many ways similar to a ship or other complex thing, a one-off construction, and it takes time to break it in and dis discover the issues. I know breaking it in probably isn't the best term to be using with regards to buildings, but you all know what I mean. All residents have access to multiplexes on-site, customer service team, and our on-site service team has been working closely with the residents to rectify these issues in a timely manner. Well, is it, are people living there when it's still under construction? Although it is yet to be completed, Australia 108 has been partially occupied since the second half of last year. Okay, wow. How, how, how keen or, or desperate would you have to be to want to live on a construction site like that? I mean, it's, it's one thing if it's your own little house and you're doing renovation work around the place, but to move in a tower as it's getting constructed. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's Melbourne, isn't it? The penthouse of the skyscraper sold for $25 million in 2015 to a Chinese-based businessman whose identity has not been disclosed. Once completed, Australia 108 will be Melbourne's tallest building. I wonder how long it will be Melbourne's tallest building. I wonder if this will be the tallest building in Melbourne for a long time. Builders Collective of Australia President Bill Dewar told The New Daily the VBA's interest in the building suggests the defects were of serious nature. Ah, uh, I think he, it depends. It depends. He could be jumping to conclusions there. It could just be a, a invest, you know, an inspection to look at trades or other things. You know, and maybe they just want to look at the plans. I don't know. I've never known VBA to go to a site and request this sort of information. Usually, they're a bit standoffish. So that would suggest to us there is something seriously wrong with this building, Mr. Dyer said. It also confirms the talk with, that we've heard, he added, in reference to reports he, he, he had heard of cracks in the plaster, windows jamming shut, movement in the building, and sounds of large cracking. Okay, so, so it's interesting, isn't it? We're getting two sides of the story. Of course, you're going to have the building, you're going to have the building, uh, or managers, multiplex and developers wanting to protect their interest. You want to have the owners wanting to protect the value of their asset. And uh, then you have others talking about it. So I think this is one to add to the list of buildings to watch and see what continues to happen. History is repeating itself. Mr. Dwyer said the developers of Sydney's Olympic Park Opal Tower initially described its defects as minor before further investigation linked the defects to problems with the building structure. Exactly the same words and sentences were used with the Opal Apartments. Minor defects, yeah, of course. And then we find out that it's stru seriously, stru seriously structural. Okay, well, I mean, they can be rectified. It, it's, it's not... It depends how you address it. I mean, yeah, it, it's not acceptable. None of them. It's not acceptable. It is serious. He's got a point. Buildings will have defects. That can be the norm. Generally, it's defects like the painter hasn't finished his job properly. They're minor defects. Well, yeah, he's got a point. What we've heard in times of this building, that windows are jammed closed. That suggests there's movement in the building because windows don't jam closed in a concrete structure. Yes, that's a good point. That's a good point. There, I mean, there is a tolerance in all of this construction to allow for some movement, some shrinkage and slight adjustment. We're talking millimeters for a window. You'd, but you don't want it jamming shut. It happens to me here in my house. My doors will jam shut. But that's because I'm in a Queenslander. We have you know, terrible, terrible soil. Great for growing plants, terrible for building. So when it rains, it moves. You know, and that means you just put a bit more pressure on the doors. Mr. Dyer said he had also been told residents had heard loud cracking sounds within the building during evenings and weekends when construction was not taking place. Let's hope it's not serious. But it's presently as fairly serious as the moment. At the moment, he added, presenting as fairly serious. Well, if there is cracking, you know, and I, I would, I would hazard a guess he's got no reason to lie about being told this and this information provided. And if people are mentioning cracking at this building, you know, one hundred eight Australia building. Let's see if if there's any uh, Google comments. They tend to be a good little. Thing. Here we go. We got 82 reviews. Um, 
The worst I've stayed in yet, I'm on floor 32. The noise at night is horrible. Creaks and winds is all you hear all night. Very expensive for what it is. I wouldn't have paid half the price I did. They've just finished level 70. Could never imagine trying to sleep up there at, a, at the time of night. Why the hell are they building in? The, why the hell are they living in a building under construction? You know why? I I don't know. It's noisy. It's a pain in the ass. You want to? I, I'm used to in construction programs managing it so you don't. You know, you can only build, only jackhammer, only do certain things at certain time of days because the noise will vibrate through everything. So um, can also feel the building sway. They don't clean your room and only give you one towel and no spare blankets. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we go? We'll go lowest ranking. They're always the most interesting. Uh, the building creaks during the night. If you like sleep, maybe look elsewhere. The Google user one month ago. Fighting for full refund after making reservation on booking. I expected to receive email. Okay. One star is a buyer who eventually gave up and purchased the townhouse somewhere else. Based on the ads and promotions online, it was my dream to be to buy first home in Australia 108. A lovely real estate agent showed me several apartments on floors at 2932, and unfortunately, I found myself disenchanted with the whole idea of living there. My review is for potential buyers. I definitely recommend inspecting the tower yourself. The gym is too small, and the pool is just minimally adequate at best. Most apartments don't have a view, and lower levels are, are not considerably cheaper than their higher ones. Not to mention that compared with house price falls in Australia, and in particular in Melbourne, Australia 108 has, uh, has managed to stick to the initial overpriced numbers. Let's say 530k from one bedroom on the 32nd floor with a northern view. Ooh, and that was five months ago. That was five months ago. And what are we seeing happening in property prices all around Australia? And you've know, you got a whole lot of people here doing a, a, what, Airbnb and other stuff here. So, I mean, that's interesting. It's, it's ratings down. There's definitely some people complaining about the building, complaining about the noise issues. I can't imagine wanting to live there when they're still building the bloody thing. I mean, am I the only one surprised with that, guys? Shit, you'd, you'd, you'd want to get a discount. So, I mean, even going to Airbnb when they're building there anyway. So the average number of defects per building. Let's have a look. New South Wales is 16. Queensland 12. Victoria 11. Wow, that that's... That's not true. Buildings with at least one defect. It should be 100%. I'd love to see how they calculated this. Because, I mean, it depends what you consider a defect. Because we'd do a defect register and you'd get 40, 50 on buildings. You'd pick up every little particular thing and go through it with a fine tooth comb and prepare a report. I'm, may, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at this. I'll, I'll follow that up. Maybe I'm, I'm just a bastard when I, when I uh, do my defect inspections. While the Daily News visited the site, a steady stream of SUVs and people were coming in and out of the building, which is surrounded by multiplex, multiplex construction boards and a handful of competing real estate agencies and apartment showrooms. The New Daily spoke to the building's concierge, but he refused to provide comment on instruction from the building manager. So public fears are growing. The revelations come amid a public outcry over shoddy workmanship in the construction industry after the high-profile evacuations of Sydney's Olympic Park, Zetland's lofts, mascot towers, and more, and more, and more. State, territory, and federal building ministers agreed to beef up the Australian bill. Oh, okay. Guys, it's not the building code. It's the building code isn't the problem. We've got legislation. The problems that are happening... The problems that are happening are not due to the building code. It's due to the policemen of the industry. It's due to the fact that we're procuring these under a design and construct model. So right before, before we even get to the point where the strata companies are in cahoots with the developers, before we even get to that, the people whose job it is, I'm banging the table, the people whose job it is to supervise and to check the quality of it are in a compromised position. The, the people who are responsible to ensure compliance with the NCC, the building code, are in a compromised position. But nonetheless, um, they want to implement the recommendations in the Shergold We Report. Yes, that is a fantastic idea. And I'm going to write down the time. So it's, you know, 14.45. I will put in my link to this report. I've read through the whole thing. 
If you want to listen to it in a podcast, go ahead. Maybe I should link it all together for some people. So, Jeff Ham, adjunct professor in architecture at University of New South Wales, said the promises missed the point. What we need now is uh, concerted and urgent action to stop defective buildings being built and a plan to help residential apartment owners rectify their buildings, he wrote in the conversation. Meanwhile, the Building Minister's Forum and the ABCB are still fiddling while Rome burns. They need to get on with it. I think we need to make design and construct contracts not applicable for any building that someone will inhabit. I think we need to put that legislation in place right now, moving forward. We need to ensure that contractors cannot hire developers, are the certifiers. They need to be, there needs to be legislation in place to ensure they're completely independent. And, you know, I, I would even look at, a, perhaps even looking at bringing it back to state control. I'm, I'm just, I'm getting more and more concerned that the free market can rectify this issue and it will rectify this issue. But what is the risk? Is the, is the, rectif- the lesson people learn, is it going to be people's ha- lives destroyed, people dying? That's where it comes to the point. We've been quite lucky at the moment with a lot of these defects. But remember, the building code, the legislation we have all around the world for construction, it was created at the cost of life. It was a reaction. Our glorious leaders, our politicians, they react to things. They're not, I don't, you know, they're not innovative guys. Legislation is reactionary. So if you want to ignore it, you've got to understand the history of what you're ignoring and why you're doing it. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me for this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about all of this. You reckon this is going to be another one? I'll see you all later. Bye for now.